today i'll be talking about angina first we'll talk about the pathophysiology then types and then we'll discuss about beta blockers why we use in anti angina as anti angina drug so this is blood vessel consider so this is the uh, plague that will be formed in the blood vessel which will be blocking either partially or completely the blood vessel so when this block appears the blood supply to the myocardial cells will decrease so when it is partially blocked and uh, if the patient is not doing any actions like walking exercising and not exerting any force then there won't be any chest pain but if it is completely blocked and if the patient is simply sitting also he'll have experienced chest pain why is this chest pain occurring so when blood is supplied oxygen is uh, supplied to the cells so they can function pump blood from the heart and then it helps in the normal functioning of the heart but when uh, plague is there there is decrease in the oxy uh, blood supply which in turn causes decreased oxygen supply causing more in uh, uh, more oxygen demand so this leads to chest pain so based on the uh, decreased in the supply of oxygen there are three types of angina that is stable angina prince metal angina unstable angina in stable angina the plague will be formed and then this plague will be partially covering the blood vessels so blood will be uh, passing through the uh, blood vessels this is transverse version okay so blood will be uh, passing through the uh, blood vessels but when uh, the person is walking or doing exercise or exerting any kind of force the uh, heart cells will uh, increase the function that is cardiac output and the heart function will increase so when the heart uh, function increases the uh, myocardial cells will ask for more oxygen when they demand for more oxygen and the blood supply is decreased the patient experience chest pain because uh, oxygen supply decreases to the uh, cells and the functioning of the cell decreases this leads to death of the cells or partial uh, non functioning of the cell so this leads to chest pain this is in the case of stable angina where you have to exert an exerting force like walking exercise or other things so that their heart function increases which leads to decreased cardiac output leads to decreased oxygen increased in oxygen demand and causing chest pain coming to prince metal this is where the blood vessel uh, shrinks or contracts so this is completely the blood vessels but it contracts which leads to decreased blood flow decreased blood flow so in this case also walking or other exercise are required and then if the blood flow is complete it won't be completely blocked because it is contraction but uh, oxygen levels will decrease in the cells and if the patient uh, exerts force then heart heart function increases that is cardiac output increases for that cardiac output to increase the blood uh, heart needs to pump when the pumping is more then uh, cells will demand for more oxygen when the demand for oxygen increases and the supply of oxygen is decreased this causes chest pain same as this one but here plague is involved here contraction is involved and then comes unstable angina in this same as stable angina there will be plague but this plague will rupture and form other plagues like it this plague won't be stable it will rupture in between and then form another plague causing increased uh, uh no it will block more of the uh, blood vessels when compared to that so more oxygen supply is decreased in this case the plague can be completely blocking so when the plague is completely blocking due to the ruptured plague that is formed Uh, without uh, even exerting the force when the patient is at rest the oxygen demand will increase the normal oxygen demand will in, uh, increase because oxygen supply is decreased when completely the plague blocks only this thing happen so but unstable angina because the normal plague ruptures any time and form uh, like when this uh, ruptures the platelets or other uh, Uh, like low lipid forms they come and accumulate here causing a bigger plague that the so the uh, blood flow decreases 
oxygen flow decreases and then causing chest pain. Uh, uh, these are the main three for types, but apart from this uh, MIs, STEMI and NSTEMI, both also can be classified under this category, but now we will learn only these three. But in NSTEMI and STEMI, uh, same plague will be formed, unstable plague will be formed, unstable angina, in this case how the unstable plague is formed, in MI, NSTEMI and STEMI also, this uh, unstable plague plays a role, where this uh, causes huge decrease in the oxygen supply to the myocardial cells, which leads to infarction. So in NSTEMI, there is no ST elevation is seen. But in STEMI, ST elevation is seen, same as uh, unstable angina. So, unstable angina, STEMI and NSTEMI together are called acute coronary syndrome. Yeah. Uh, yes. These are the types and the um, angina, like pathophysiology in short. So, first we will be discussing about beta blockers today. Beta blockers mainly we will see about uh, metoprolol, atinolol and propranolol. Metoprolol, uh, atinolol and propranolol. In this, these two mainly focus on some beta 1 receptor and this one focuses on both beta 1 and beta 2. These two are commonly used in uh, angina, apart, uh, these beta blockers are used as first line prophylactic uh, uh, treatment. First when a patient comes with angina, they give nitroglycerins. After that first line prophylactic treatment, they will start with beta blockers. So how does beta blockers act? Yeah. Heart cells has two types of cells, right? Nodal cells and contractile cells. These are the receptors and this is nodal cells and this is contractile cells. Nodal cells are like SAN cells, like those cells and this contractile cells is for contracting. So these beta blockers, uh, beta receptors, I mean these receptors in this epinephrine or norepinephrine comes and attaches and causes contractility or the uh, dromotropic effect where the uh, rate of induction increases. So the cardiac output increases when the no normal no norepinephrine or epinephrine gets attached to these receptors. So if beta blockers block these receptors thereby decreasing the uh, contractility and thereby decreasing the cardiac work and then decreasing the oxygen demand not the uh, and decreasing the oxygen consumption So when beta blockers are given, they, comes and they come and bind to these receptors. Normally when norepinephrine, epinephrine, uh, when it comes and binds, whatever action it does, it reverses. That is, when the beta blockers attacks, attaches to these uh, receptors, heart rate decreases in nodal cells and then contractility decreases in uh, contractile cells. And then this leads to cardiac, uh, decreased cardiac output and in this SV, that is stroke volume is decreased and that de uh, causes decrease in cardiac output. Thereby totally the burden to the heart is decreased. Uh, so when cardiac output decreases, the oxygen uh, consumption is also decreased. When oxygen consumption is decreased, then oxygen demand also decreases.
So this is how beta blockers work in this case. But you can you say what is the drawback of giving beta blockers? Think no here or let uh, most of the patients who have these kind of diseases will also have other comorbidities. So, in the case of uh, COPD and diabetes mellitus, these two will be focusing now. So, propranolol, it, uh, it has both beta 1 and beta 2 action. No. So, COPD. Uh, beta 2 cells are more in lungs. So, when in patients with COPD, when uh, propranolol is given or if the increased dose of atinolol or metoprolol is given, uh, it acts on these lungs, lung cells. So, uh, when in COPD case, what is the uh, thing you can see? Bronchoconstriction, you can see, no? The constriction and bronchospasm, the, thereby worsening asthma. So, in this condition, you should not give uh, propranolol. So, heart rate, when heart rate decreases, it is bradycardia. In patient with already bradycardia, they cannot give beta blockers because it will worsen the bad, bradycardia. So, in the same way, uh, uh, when contractility is increased and the patient is hypertensive and is on uh, medication, and if they are not monitoring properly, it can lead to hypotension. Ah. In diabetes mellitus, how does it act? Any guess? Okay. In diabetes uh, mellitus, uh, when they give medication, uh, most of the time there you can see hypoglycemia in some patients so when uh, hypoglycemia is uh, sh uh, seen in a patient what are the symptoms that a patient can show like related to these increased heart rate and then uh, uh, diaphoretic actions so when this medication is given beta blockers are given this action is masked so uh, the sympathetic or mit Mm. The sympathetic reflex, that is diaphoresis and uh, increased heart rate will not be shown. This masks that reaction so that the patient cannot identify that patient is hypoglycemic until and unless they have a serious fall or something. These are symptom, uh, these mask the symptoms and causes uh, risk to the patients. So, treatment algorithm will discuss. Mm? You understand? Any doubts? Propranolol, they will be uh, treating it with caution, but in atinolol and metoprolol, if increased dose is given for a longer time, then these uh, side effects can be seen. So, according to treatment algorithm, when a patient comes with angina, first nitroglycerin they will give to treat and then prophylactic treatment they will start with beta blockers. And it is uh, not given in diabetes mellitus patients and uh, COPD patients or asthma patients. Then it is mostly given in uh, post MI to decrease the mortality and hypertension patients. Hmm? No, it's not. It should not be given. Carvedilol. Uh, hmm. uh, they say like if it is COPD and asthma, it can worsen their condition, so they should not give. Especially propranolol. If they have beta two receptor uh, like action, then they should not give. And these things, they have to monitor the dose. So, if the increased dose is seen only, they cannot give. And diabetes mellitus. And diabetes mellitus, in this case, if you can monitor the hypoglycemia levels, that is, if you monitor the uh, sugar level uh, not, like casually, then you can give in diabetes patient. If you are not monitoring and if you are giving the patient to home, like the medicine they are prescribing to home and they are not checking their uh, sugar daily, then this uh, diaphoresis act action, that is, Diabetes mellitus, uh, in patients with diabetes mellitus, they give uh, hypoglycemics, no, I mean anti-hyperglycemic drugs. So, that will cause hypoglycemia. And if the hypoglycemia is uh, like more, then the action is like when glucose levels decreases in the blood vessels, it sends uh, signals to the brain saying that the glucose levels is decreasing. 
so diaphoresis and heart rate will increase and that's how a patient realizes that the patient is hypoglycemic this uh, reaction or this reflex is masked by beta blockers so the patient won't realize until and unless it is a serious condition where the patient may faint and fall or it may be leading to death so in that condition only the patient will realize that patient is hypoglycemic to not go into that situation you should give it with caution or monitor